John Walton discusses the complexities of interpreting the ancient Near Eastern term bara, often translated as to create. Walton warns against overlaying modern concepts of cosmological ontology onto this ancient term. He argues that it is crucial to explore the semantic range of bara while separating it from our current materialistic understanding. This is to discover what the term actually meant in its original context in terms of creative activity. Also, Walton delves into the syntactical peculiarities of Genesis 1, 1, where the term appears, emphasizing three distinct features. These include the use of a preposition without the definite article, a verbal form following recit instead of a nominal form, and the application of Masoretic disjunctive cantillation marks to separate the first word from the rest of the verse. He points to commentaries by Wenham and Hamilton to elaborate on these technicalities. Moreover, Walton touches on various scholarly works and terms that add nuance to the understanding of bara. This includes distinctions between the terms resit and tehila, as well as the term aharit, which contrasts with eschaton, both of which relate to temporal dimensions like the latter days. The essence is to encourage a nuanced, historically and culturally sensitive approach to interpreting ancient texts, specifically with the term bara, cautioning against the imposition of modern ontological frameworks. Furthermore, in Walton's study of the Hebrew verb bara, he notes its unique usage in the Hebrew Bible. It appears only with deity as its subject, accentuating the divine prerogative over the action denoted by the verb. Humans are excluded from performing or participating in this activity. However, Walton's focus is primarily on the types of direct objects that the verb can take. He categorizes these into eight groups, cosmos, people in general, specific groups of people, specific individuals or types of individuals, creatures, natural phenomena, components of cosmic geography, and condition, specifically, a pure heart. What stands out from this categorization is that the direct objects of bara are not necessarily material entities. Even when they are material, the context does not necessarily support a straightforward, objectifying interpretation. This nuanced understanding challenges simplistic readings of the verb and opens up more complex interpretations of divine action in the Hebrew Bible. In addition, Walton delves into the semantic range of the Hebrew word bara, commonly used in the context of creation in the Hebrew Bible. Walton notes that the etymology of the term is difficult to pin down due to the lack of universally recognized cognates in other Semitic languages. Interestingly, bara appears in various forms like kal, peel, and nifal, each carrying different nuances. In particular, Walton focuses on the peel form, often translated as to separate, suggesting that it may be etymologically connected to the kal and nifal forms that mean to create. Walton re-evaluates the relationship between these different forms and suggests that the core idea of bara might revolve around separation or distinguishing. He brings this notion to light by examining various biblical instances where bara is used. For example, in Numbers 1630, bara is used in the context of the earth opening up to swallow rebels, which Walton contends could be seen as an act of divine separation. In his analysis, Walton affirms the functional aspect of existence in Israelite ontology. He emphasizes that the term bara implies giving something a role and function in an ordered system rather than a material existence. This is especially true in the context of cosmogonies, both in Genesis and in the broader ancient Near Eastern world, where creation often involves an act of separation or setting in order. Thus, Walton concludes that while bara is best understood as to bring something into existence, this existence is functionally oriented. This understanding, he debates, is more aligned with the ancient Near Eastern perception of reality. Besides, it asserts the complexity and depth of the term bara, which not only signifies creation, but also incorporates ideas of order, separation, and functionality. Last but not least, Walton discusses the complexities surrounding the Hebrew word asa, especially in the context of cosmology and the creation narrative. The word traditionally translates into to make or to do, but Walton disputes that this is an oversimplification. He proposes that the meaning of asa can stretch far beyond material manufacturing to also encapsulate functions or actions dependent on the context in which it is used. Walton notes that asa is a high-frequency verb with over 2,600 uses and a wide range of translations into English, making it a multifaceted general-use word. 
he highlights that the semantic range of Asa contains various categories. While lexicons traditionally offer the meaning of to do or to make, they also list other variations that arise out of different contexts. The English translations do and make are themselves diverse in their applications, with do referring mainly to activity and behavior and make often connoting material creation. He references D.A. Carson's work, Semantic Obsolescence, to suggest that the semantic history of a word could influence its application. Walton also alludes to the Enuma Elish, an ancient Mesopotamian text, to demonstrate that the choice of words in Genesis could have been influenced by pre-existing narratives and their associated meanings. Overall, Walton challenges the notion that Asa simply means to make, especially when referring to cosmological entities like heaven and earth. He argues for a nuanced understanding, one that allows for the term to encompass actions and functions, as well as material creation, depending on the context. This opens up a variety of interpretive possibilities, such as what an ancient Israelite might think when referring to Yahweh as the maker of heaven and earth. In conclusion, Walton's scholarly examination of the ancient Near Eastern term, bara, often translated as to create, calls for a nuanced understanding that goes beyond modern materialistic interpretations. Walton contends that the term needs to be understood in its original cultural and historical context. He indicates three syntactical peculiarities in Genesis 1. One, where bara appears, cautioning against overlaying modern frameworks on the text. He cites Wenham and Hamilton to explore these features, and he also introduces various scholarly works that enrich the term's meaning. Further, Walton notes that in the Hebrew Bible, bara is exclusively used with deity as the subject and can take on a range of direct objects, not just material entities. This challenges simple interpretations and invites more complex readings of divine action. Besides, Walton delves into the semantic range of bara, including its various forms like Kyle Peel and Nifal. He suggests that these different forms may be interconnected, revolving around the core idea of separation or distinguishing, rather than just creation in a material sense. He uses examples like Numbers 1630, where bara could signify divine separation, to debates that the term implies giving something a role and function, rather than just material existence. Additionally, Walton discusses another Hebrew term, asa, traditionally translated as to make or to do. He challenges this simplification by noting that the term could also refer to functions or actions depending on context. Citing D.A. Carson and the ancient text Enuma Elish, he suggests that Asa's meaning is multifaceted, opening up various interpretive possibilities. Walton's overall argument is that terms like bara and asa should be understood in a way that aligns with ancient Near Eastern thought, which maintains function and order and not just material creation.